In this problem, we're given two parametric equations, and we have to find a few things. We have to find dy dx, the second derivative, and then the slope and concavity at the value of the parameter t equals 5. Let's go ahead and work through this. So first, let's find dy dx. So the formula for dy dx is the following. So it's dy over dt divided by dx dt. And it's really easy to remember the formula because you can think of it as y over x. So dy dt over dx dt. And let's go ahead and rewrite our parametric equations over here. And let's write them in a more convenient way. So the square root of t can be written as t to the 1 half. Likewise here, we can write y as t minus 1 to the 1 half. So t minus 1 to the 1 half. Let's go ahead and work out the derivatives over here. So dx dt. We can just use the power rule for this. So we take the 1 half and we put it in the front. So 1 half t. Then you subtract 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then dy dt, that's equal to, again, put the 1 half in the front. So this is 1 half t minus 1. And then 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside function. It's the chain rule. The derivative of t minus 1 is just 1. All right, let's go ahead and let me go ahead and rewrite this one more time. And then we'll go ahead and plug everything in to our formula. So let's see. So dy dt is this piece here, 1 half t minus 1 to the negative 1 half. So 1 half parentheses t minus 1 to the negative 1 half. That's the top piece. Over, and then dx dt is this piece here. So 1 half t to the negative one half. This is really nice because the t's all cancel. So that's really, really nice. These go away. So dy dx is equal to, so we can flip these. I can bring this upstairs and bring this downstairs and the signs change, the signs on the exponents. So it'll become t to the one half over parentheses t minus one to the one half. And I'll leave it like this. You can rewrite it in terms of uh, square roots if you like. If you were to do that, you could write it as the square root of t over the square root of t minus 1. That would be a prettier answer. I'm leaving it like this because we're going to take the derivative of this in a minute when we find the second derivative. Okay, let's go ahead and find the... Oh. Let's go ahead and find the slope. We can actually do that. So because we have the first derivative, we can go ahead and briefly find the slopes. So let's do that. So dy dx at the value of t equals 5 is equal to, so plugging in 5 into all the t's, we get the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 minus 1. That's equal to the square root of 5 over the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So we end up with the square root of 5 over 2. So this is the slope of the graphs of these parametric equations at the value of t equals 5. So this is the slope. All right, let's go ahead and find the second derivative. So the formula for the second derivative is a little bit more challenging. Okay, it's given by the following. So in the numerator, we have d dt of, and then it's just dy dx. That's what goes in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have dx dt. All right, so to find the numerator, we have to take the derivative of this, okay? And that requires a quotient rule. So let's go to the side and, and do that. I'm going to do it. Uh, I'll do it down here. So d dt, this is just the numerator, of dy dx. I'll put it here, t to the 1 half 
over and then t minus 1 to the 1 half. So this is going to require the quotient rule. So recall the quotient rule says if you have f over g and you take the derivative, think of f as the first and g as the second. It's the derivative of the first times the second minus the first times the derivative of the second all over the second one squared or the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom one squared. So in this case, the derivative of the top will be one half t to the negative one half, right? That's just the power rule on the top piece times the bottom piece. So t minus one to the one half minus the top piece. So t to the one half times the derivative of the bottom. So one half parentheses t minus one and subtracting one gives us negative one half and then chain rule the derivative of the inside but that's just one so I won't bother to write it. All divided by the bottom one squared. So when you square the bottom one the one half goes away and we just get t minus one. Let's go ahead and check this. So it's the derivative of the top piece, that's right here, using the power rule, times the bottom piece, okay, minus the top piece, times the derivative of the bottom piece, all over the bottom one squared, and when you square the bottom one, the one half will go away. All right, we should simplify this, and I'm going to show you how it's a little bit sneaky. So this is equal to. So the trick is you want to pull out um, the smallest exponents, so things that have the lowest powers. So first you can pull out the one half, then you have to pull out a t, and you just look at the exponents. We have negative one half, and we have one half. So negative one half is smaller, so you pull that one out. Then we also have to pull out a t minus one, and you have one half, and negative one half, so you pull out the negative one half. Okay, and then bracket, let's see, what's missing here? So what do we need to put here in order to get what's here? Okay, so that's the question. So we already have the one half, we already have the t to the negative one half. We just need to come up with t minus one to the one half. So we really just need a t minus one to the one. And this is where you go back and you check. When you multiply these, you add the exponents, negative one half plus one, gives you the one half that you need in order for this to work. So if you take all of this and multiply it by this, you should convince yourself that it does actually work because you add the exponents. In this other piece here, so this piece here, what do we need? Let's see, we've already pulled out the one half. We've already taken care of t minus one to the negative one half. It looks like we just need a minus t to the one. And the reason is when you multiply t to the 1 times t to the negative 1 half, you add the exponents, right? So 1 plus negative 1 half is 1 half. This is a, a really sneaky trick. And so basically what you do, again, is you just pull out the smallest thing. So I'll do it again up here. So the 1 half, that, that they both have 1 half. t to the negative 1 half, that's the smaller one. t minus 1 to the negative 1 half, that's the smaller one. Then you have to think, you know, what's missing here and what's missing here in order for this to work. All right, let's keep going. This is equal to, let's see, um, these t's cancel. Okay, these t's cancel. And um, this t minus 1 to the 1 half can come downstairs. Okay. Um, so we have, and so can this one. So let's see, I'll do it in steps. So we have 1 half. I'll pull the 1 half out front. And uh, up top, we'll have a negative 1. Right, that's from this here. And then these two will come downstairs. So we have t to the 1 half, t minus 1 to the 1 half, and then we have t minus 1. So this is equal to negative 1 over 2 times 1 over, and it's t to the 1 half. And then here you add these exponents. So it'll be t minus 1. So 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. Pretty hardcore. It's good for you. This builds, this builds character. So then we have the second derivative. We write it one more time to refresh your memory. Is equal to ddt 
of dy dx over dx dt. So we know that the top piece, we just worked it out, is all of this stuff. So it's negative 1 half, 1 over t to the 1 half, t minus 1 to the 3 halves. And on the bottom, we have dx dt. So dx dt, we found way at the beginning of the problem, right? dx dt, uh, where is dx dt? It's right here. Here it is. 1 half t to the negative 1 half. So I'm going to go back down and write that down. So 1 half t to the negative 1 half. Okay? So what happens here? Oh, look at this. These cancel. That's z equal to. So watch this. This. When you divide by this, you really multiply by the reciprocal of this, right? So, or you can just bring it upstairs. But I'll write it like this. 1 over t to the 1 half. There's my negative. I don't want to lose that. t minus 1 to the 3 halves. And it's being divided by this. So it's times the reciprocal of that. Okay? Remember, dividing by this is multiplying by the reciprocal. And then what I'll do is I'll bring it upstairs in the next step. Watch this. Negative 1 over t to the 1 half, t minus 1 to the 3 halves, times, and then t to the 1 half over 1, right? You bring it up and it becomes positive, and then boom, look at that, they cancel. So we get negative 1 over, finally, t minus 1 to the 3 halves, and that is finally the second derivative. So it took uh, quite a bit of work, and I think I think the hardest thing for people in this problem is right here. It's this, it's this, it's this insanity, but it is not that bad. You just have to remember that when you do it, you have to pull out the smaller ones. Here it is again up here. See, you pull out the one half, you pull out t to the negative one half, you pull out t minus one to the negative one half. You say, hey, what goes here? What's missing? And then that's how we did this. We got the t minus one, and we got the t. So remember, you add exponents when you when you multiply. The last part is to find the concavity. So let's finish it up. So the concavity, basically we just have to plug in t equals 5 into the second derivative. So this is negative 1 over, this will be 5 minus 1 to the 3 halves. This is negative 1 over 4 to the 3 halves. So 4 to the 3 halves is 8. You might say, how do you know that? Um, it's a trick. If you have 4 to the 3 halves, okay, the 2 goes in the little pocket, just like that. The 4 goes here. And you can put the 3 anywhere you want. I'll put it outside. The square root of 4 is 2. So you get 2 cubed, so you get 8. So this is equal to negative 1 over 8. That's our, that's our concavity. And because it's negative, the answer would be concave down. So a little bit hard of a problem, but um, you know it's not, it's not too bad. It just requires uh, some, some heavy-duty factoring. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.